Hi, this is Kevin Brown. Today I want to take just a moment and not necessarily do any problems, but just talk about the hypothesis test itself and some terminology that we associate with that. So recall with a hypothesis test, we have a null hypothesis and we have an alternative hypothesis. So we might imagine, for example, if I wanted to see if um, the mean GPA at our particular institution for uh, our business students is higher than the mean GPA uh, for the business students at a competitor institution. Um, so we might say the mean GPA uh, for our institution um, GPA 1 and subtract out the mean GPA for a competitor and I'll write that down here so recall that if I'm trying to demonstrate that we have a higher GPA then that's going to be my alternative so if ours is higher then this would be, when we subtract our competitor, it would be a value greater than zero, which means that this would be equal or less than zero. So very simple hypothesis test. But let's imagine that I gather my data and I don't have enough evidence to demonstrate my alternative hypothesis. Why would I not say that I should accept the null hypothesis. Well, here's why. It's because of a, of a logical fallacy, what we call um, arguing from ignorance or the ad ignorantium fallacy. And it basically is this, that just because something can't be proven false, that doesn't necessarily make it true. Just because something can't be proven true, that doesn't necessarily make it false. Imagine the legal system within the United States. And in the United States, in our legal system, we say you are innocent until proven guilty. So the null hypothesis in this sense is that you are innocent. And then you go through a trial and evidence is presented by the defense and the prosecution and whatnot, and a jury weighs this up or a judge weighs this up. And at the end, if there is not enough evidence for the alternative, the guilt of a given individual, we don't necessarily say they're innocent. What do we say? We say they're not guilty. So it's another way of saying we don't have enough evidence to say they're guilty, so we just simply say they're not guilty. This is quite different from saying that they're innocent. It's the same way with this. I might not have enough evidence to say that our GPA is better than a competitor institution, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the null hypothesis is true it just means I don't have enough evidence to say that it's false. And there's a big difference between these two premises. One way to get at this might be a better sample size or just a better study in general. So there are ways to improve the study, but based upon the information that we have in any given problem, if we don't have enough evidence to reject the null, or I'm sorry, yes, to reject the null, that doesn't make the null true, just means we don't have enough evidence to actually reject it. So I just wanted to take a moment and talk about that, and thanks for your attention.